Today, we're going to be talking about the canoe rental business. This has a lot of tie-ins to problems we saw, like the uh, hockey stadium problem and the bird watching problem. Um, so, the only twist here is, um, well, one, we don't have to worry about profits because there's no mention of cost in the entire paragraph. Um, but uh, we do have one change, and that's 50 cent increases cause two um, rental losses. So we lose two rentals every time we raise the price 50 cents. Usually um, they talk about every $1 increase. So this is a little bit of a change in our rate of change, but uh, we can work around that. Um, the rest of the problem works the same. Um, I start by looking at the question, what, what, what should you charge? That means that that's going to be my independent variable. That's the thing that I'm going to change control. And so I define X to be the price for rental. <clears throat> the sentence saying that... Uh, Charging $12 per canoe, averaging 36 rentals a day, seems to imply that uh, the price is going to have an effect on the number of rentals, and that's confirmed by the second sentence. So, I know that the number of rentals, I'll call that C for canoe, um, is going to be a variable that will be dependent on the price of the rentals, and we also have revenue because um, that says maximize your income. So it's maximizing your revenue in this case. And the other little fact is that uh, revenue is going to be the product of the canoe rentals times the price per rental. This is a lot like distance equals rate times time. The X is the rate of change and the number of rentals would be the time and the revenue would be the distance. So it's another linear function, another direct variation. So we continue um, with before we do we're going to look at that rate because it says we will lose two rentals for every half dollar. Well, we could use our algebra skills, our arithmetic skills, and simplify that to a four rental loss for every dollar. So instead of working with 50 cent increases, we'll work with dollar increases, but that means we're going to lose twice as many rentals every time we increase the price by a dollar. So that's the only difference in the twist with the 50 cents change. So I'm going to form a table, starting with the given information. I know uh, $12 rentals, 36 rentals, we don't lose any. That's the regular starting stuff. <laughs> and then our revenue will be the product, $12 uh, dollars per rental times 36 rentals. And then um, I'm just going to jack up the price a dollar and see what happens. $13 is $1 more, which means we'll lose four customers. That is $32. Sorry, customers. Uh, raise the price another dollar. That's two dollar increases for a total of eight ca uh, canoe rentals lost, and therefore we're now going to uh, multiply our fourteen dollars per rental times the twenty eight rentals to get our revenue. So at this point, we should be able to see a pattern, and this is where um, a little bit of uh, algebra translation is handy. X being the price that I set, whatever price it is, I'm going to start with thirty six rentals from the twelve dollar set. I'm going to lose four rentals for every dollar? See this right here, if we just write 36 minus 4 times x, that's not going to work for us because if x is $12, we're going to have $48 removed, or sorry, customers removed from the 36 customers to begin with. So that's not going to work. What we have to recognize is when x was 12, we only subtracted 0 4s. When a dollar was increased, we subtract 1 4. When a dollar was increased twice, we subtracted 2 4s. So however many dollars over 12, that's how we're going to be able to figure out how many four canoe rental losses there will be. So we lose four canoe rentals for every dollar more than 12. So just saying x minus 12 is a way of saying every dollar more than 12. Pretty handy. So just as before, we take the price times the number of rentals, and that's a relationship that now connects the price to the revenue. All we have to do is a little bit of algebra cosmetics. So first I'm going to distribute the negative 4. Watch for that negative 12 to positive 48. I'm then going to collect like terms, distribute the x to get my revenue function. Just to make sure this is all copacetic, I'm going to uh, use x equals 14 because I calculated revenue for that already. Substituting 14 into the equation, I generate $392 in revenue. I check to see that that's equal to 14 times 28. 14 times 28 is from the table back over here. 14, oops, <laughs> wrong place. 14 times 28 is the revenue. So I went to my calculator, typed in 14 times 28, and sure enough, that was the right value. Now I just need to answer the question. We need to maximize our revenue. 
and this is a quadratic function, so it's going to be a parabola. In fact, um, I don't lose my mental sketch skills. I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a parabola with a zero y-intercept that goes up and comes back down. We're looking for the axis of symmetry. Nice axis of symmetry right there. Uh, just basically right down there, which we'll find using the formula for axis of symmetry. The B value is negative 84, A value is negative 4. That's going to be 84 divided by 8, which will go 10 and 1 half times. It says we should charge $10.50 to maximize the revenue. And because I'm a curious person, I substitute 10 and 1 half into the equation and find out that the maximum revenue for rentals will be $441, as confirmed by my technology. So I already proved the equation is valid over here, and so I just have to prove that the maximum that I found using this formula is also valid. Everything's working. Have a great day.